the right BC pattern is a pattern of muscular activity uh, described by the Postural Restoration Institute, which centers around the upper right chest and the entire right side of the torso. Uh, it means the right brachial chain pattern. It is the chain of muscles on the right side that get overactive when you're held over, when your center of mass is held over to the right side uh, for too long, and this area gets very, very tight. It's one of the areas that we have to open up through inhalation and expansion of the rib cage so that we can get over to our non-dominant side, which is the left side. Now, a little bit later in the video, you're gonna see this right BC pattern in action as I test uh, two of my friends. Uh, you'll see how, how they use their right abdominal wall and their, their right rib cage when they try to use their left side. And that's the classic sign of overactivity of this right dominance. The biggest two players in this right brachial chain pattern is probably the right pec minor and the right internal obliques and the right diaphragm. Because remember, underlying all these patterns this, is this inherent asymmetry built inside the human body. And for the thorax and pelvis, the biggest influence is going to be this bigger right diaphragm. So you can see in this image that the right diaphragm attaches lower on the lumbar spine, and it's also bigger. So it has more mechanical advantage to turn the lumbar spine to the right. I'm going to match your orientation to the right, which puts the body over onto the right side. And then when you see that dotted line, that's about the top of the diaphragm area. From that position, the body has to counter rotate back to the left. So that establishes this right BC pattern. So if I do it facing you, here I am, I go over to my right side, which would orient me this way, but I have to stay straight. So from here up, I start to twist. And that's why you often, often see right shoulders that like to come forward. This right pec minor is just helping you stay centered when your body weight is shifted to the right because your head, your neck, everything has to twist back to the left for you to stay straight. So you're over on your right, which also means the pelvis is over on the right. So when you see that left AIC, the left AIC pattern, that main muscle that would be uh, contributing to that left AIC pattern is the left psoas muscle, brings the pelvis forward on the left, the lumbar spine rotates to the right, body weight shifts to the right, and then we kind of get tight through this right side, and then we have to twist back to the left to stay straight. And that's what establishes the left AIC, right BC pattern. That's not very, it's not very complicated to, to inhibit that pattern. Uh, is there a left BC pattern? Well, yeah, that's what we want to get people to. So remember, people, because they're right dominant, they get stuck in this left AIC, right BC pattern. Just means you're stuck over on your right side. We need to establish a right AIC, which gets me over to my left, and then a left BC, which rotates me to the right. It's just called left stance. So left AIC, right BC describes a human, a person who is existing more on the right side because of asymmetry, and thus they're kind of stuck in this right stance phase of walking. We need to get them to their left and then rotate back to the right while stable through that left side, and that would establish a right AIC, left BC, pattern. So people are stuck in right stance. We need them to get to, into a stable left stance. And that's where the confusion comes in. People sometimes thinking that they're a different pattern when in reality they're not. Uh, but sometimes there can be compensation on top of these patterns. You can have both shoulders forward. You could be a bilateral BC pattern. You could, have, you could be a bilateral AIC and have both sides of the pelvis forward. Uh, the PEC pattern is not the same thing as a bilateral AIC. It's really not that much different, but there's differences because the PEC is really referring to your back muscles. So that's the underlying right BC pattern, but what does it look like in action? Now this right BC pattern is not hard to understand, so it's kind of like, what's the big deal? Well, you're going to see it in action with a test that we use in posture restoration that it's, a, it's an integration test to see if someone can integrate the left side of their body. What you're going to see is that when people try to use the left side of their body, you'll see their right abdominal wall or their right leg even, or even right neck kicking in to help them try to use their left side, and that's the problem. So instead of me explaining what you're seeing, you're gonna see it in the video, but just listen to my conversation with my friend Jason here, and, it'll, and you'll see exactly what's going on, how I would actually work with someone and explain the situation. All right, so 
First step, can you bring your ankle up to the knee? Yeah, I can do the tightening through there. That's okay. His right hip is tightening. Uh, we'll see. Now. All right, so you have a left hamstring. That's good. Now, can you pick up, can you pick your left knee up off the table? And he cannot. Without rolling backwards. His right side is just collapsing. That's it. And you're rolling And his neck is coming you're forward. Rolling you're still, I mean, your hip is rolling back. Okay, he cannot do it. So you're just seeing it again. He cannot do it. He can't lift up his left leg. He can't use his left inner thigh without his right BC pattern and neck all crunching down. So he's not really in pain. He has some aches and pains. Uh, his left hip might test neutral because he does have a left hamstring because he could put his left foot up. Uh, but he has no true frontal plane. He cannot shift into his left side. He's just crunching his right side in order to try to move his left side. And that is the issue. Uh, when people try to get to their left side, because their pelvis never fully turns to the left, their pelvis never fully turns to the left, I'm matching your orientation. Uh, because of that, their right side is overactive. This is the right side, the right active, the right side is overactive, even when they're trying to use their left leg. And that's the pattern of activity that we, of activity that we are trying to inhibit in postural restoration. Now you're gonna see it again. This is my friend Patty. And uh, now Jason doesn't have much discomfort or pain. Patty does. If she ever did PRI, uh, she'd be fine. I'm pretty sure of that, but you can't make people do it. So again, I'm just gonna have you listen to the conversation that I'm having with Patty and you'll see, you'll hear her comments as well. This is just the center. Now you're gonna reach this right leg towards me a little bit. Good. Now, did you feel your back tighten up at all? Yeah. Where back got tight. Okay, that's what I saw. Mm -hmm. So we know you can't inhibit. She couldn't right reach with her back. right leg without tightening her back. Your right QL. She can't lengthen her right side. It's too compressed. Now, first thing you're gonna try to do is I'm gonna ask you to bring your ankle up to your knee. Okay, now I'm feeling your right leg tightening up. Her right leg was sure. really pushing okay. down on me okay. to try to raise her left foot. She can't do it. Bit. I shouldn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. Let's try it again. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Now you're gonna hold it there. Now holding it there, without rolling this top hip backwards, can you, and you can stabilize with yourself with your right hand, can you pick up your left knee? No. She can't do it. No. And if you look, Just like Jason. I'm seeing your right abdominal wall tighten up big time to help you lift up that left knee. Uh, let's. So right. now we're gonna do now the opposite side. Let yourself relax. All right, now you probably tighten on the back of the left wall. So oh, my back's killing me today. Her back was hurting that so day. Forward. She's a big time neck breather. Bring it forward. What do you mean? Is it hard? Like you bring this hip forward? No, it's not hard. Is it easier than the other side? It feels easier for something. It's easier. She that's can bring her left hip forward out. easier. Because when you bring your left hip forward, it turns your pelvis. Which right. is the pattern. Oh, I see. That's, that's the pattern. That's, that's resistance. That's right. Yeah, okay. so that should be easier. Got yeah. it. Now, if you reach with this leg, all right, what do you feel? So it's falling with that. Okay. Now, can you pick up your ankle? Mm. Ankle here. I, I felt nothing. I didn't feel that any part of her left leg pushing down. Yeah, it a, bring it, bring it, this up, there you go. Okay, bring it. I felt nothing. Okay. Now stabilize yourself. Now can you pick up your right knee? And she could do it. Not great, but she could do it. So that's the difference. When she tried to use her left leg, all I felt was her right leg pushing down on my shoulder. And her everything just tightened up, just like with Jason. When I flipped her around, when I flipped her around to do, to use her right leg, she could bring her right foot up to her, the inside of her left knee. I didn't feel her left leg push down on me. Uh, and then she could pick up her right knee, not amazingly well, but she did it again without me feeling, without her left leg tightening up and pushing down on me. And that's the difference. It's just easier to do when you're working your right leg it's harder to do when you're trying to work your left leg. And that's because of dominance, that's it. So both of them, you could see their right BC pattern kick in when they try to use their left leg, their left hip muscles. With Patty, the same thing didn't happen when she tried to use her, her right hip muscles. That's because of asymmetry, it's just easier to do. Again, that is the difference, that's the issue. That's why people are not on their left side. You might see people, shifted to the left, but they're still gonna struggle to do those tests. Uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be the same outcome. 
So where someone has where where someone looks like they're standing with their weight is not really what's going on underneath because it's really more of a brain integration issue. They're both strong people. <laughs> it has nothing to do with strength. That's just the fact that they don't do posture restoration. They lift weights. They've lifted weights for many, many years. They're strong. They went through extension. Uh, one is a big time neck breather. Uh, one is not. Uh, he's just doesn't do any PRI. He just likes to lift weights. And although he's really smart and he does more unilateral activity than bilateral, but that's what it looks like. So that's the right BC pattern uh, in posture restoration. How do you inhibit that? Well, there's some pretty simple things. It's really just about getting air into the right side of the rib cage. When the neck is not involved, it's really simple. You could just do something like this. You could just sit in that position. Uh, you could push your left knee down into a towel as you sit and breathe and breathe into the right side. So if I expand on the right side on the inhale and exhale through my left side, I feel my left abdominals. My left knee is pushing down. I would feel my left inner thigh. Most people will not if they're not neutral already. And then you take a breath in, so everything's staying compressed on the left. Extend, then you breathe in. You just inhibited the pattern. Uh, you just expanded your rib cage. Uh, now, some people might not feel comfortable in that position first, so you could preface it, or you could start in a hands and knees position, where you're trying to get into complete flexion to get air into your back. Uh, you would be breathing to expand your back backwards to get into more flexion, uh, which could then make the previous position a lot more easily, uh, a lot easier. And again, you just that, to these techniques, you usually just kind of breathe for five breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, getting all the air out, pause for three to five seconds before you inhale again, three, two, one. And you're just trying to direct the airflow into the appropriate positions. Now, these are very low level, uh, not going to work for everybody because I would say about a lot of people have overactivity of their neck, and that's what people don't really understand. Uh, so it might help. It might help a little, might not help at all. Everyone's a little bit different. This, these techniques are just help. They will help inhibit a right BC pattern. Uh, doesn't mean you're stable. Doesn't mean anything else other than you just expand your rib cage with air and you'll pass some shoulder tests that otherwise you couldn't have. Just remember, this is always one small part of a much, not always much larger uh, program but this is just inhibition. Then you still have to be able to shift to your left and stabilize on your left and then get your right glute into your life. So these are just inhibition techniques. <laughs> this is not a complete program, so don't think this is gonna be world-changing on its own uh, because that's not how posture restoration works.